All righty, you know what day it is. It's Friday. It's Catch Up Live Day, guys. And it is the third session in our uh, miniature train modeling um, series here. So today Tyson's going to be modeling some terrain and laying down some track. So get ready for it. The weekend's right around the corner and SketchUp's here to play. Let's go. Thank you, Matt. Um, not Aaron. Uh, I got to here. Here's Matt. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> and uh, when, when you when you throw it, you put it that way, laying down some sweet track. I want to be like, I'm going to lay down some sweet beats or something. <laughs> Tracking the beats, uh, baby. We're but, making hits. I, I don't know if either is going to be successful. Uh, <laughs> we'll see. Oh, no. It's going to be a success no matter what happens. Just being here is a success. <laughs> nice. Um, <laughs> let's queue up. <clears throat> so, hey, thanks, everybody, for joining. Um, please do shout out. Uh, we, we see some of y'all coming back week to week and some of our regulars, but... Let us know you're here, and if you're new or if you don't shout out that often, please chime up in the comments. Let us know where you're coming in from um, so we can give you a shout out. Uh, but welcome, and thanks for thanks for joining us. Um, yeah, so, love to have you here. It's going to be a fun time today on the stream. So I already see Switzerland in there. I see Newfoundland. Nice. Newfoundland? Newfoundland. I don't know how to properly uh, pronounce that, but uh, yeah, this is awesome. Love to see all you guys here. Yeah. Keep it coming. Let us know. This so time, what's this beautiful looking locomotive on the uh, screen here? So this showed up um, a couple days ago on the forums. And since it was relevant, I thought we'd highlight the uh, over in the gallery on the SketchUp community forums is this amazing, amazing 3D printed train that was modeled in SketchUp. So check out, um, hopefully you can see this a little bit, the details on this. It's insane. That's awesome. Oh, it's more than awesome. It's so good. Um, so the this is worth going and checking Ooh. out. Give me a comment. Um, I think the author said that there there might even be a, somewhere between 100 and 200 parts. I I would have to skim. I could be wrong, but um, yeah, like individually 3D printed parts, right? Yeah, yeah. Just uh, that is insane. Amazing, amazing uh, model creation. So if you look at this, and then I believe we can see a little bit of the sketch model down here as well. Yeah, it's so cool, especially because, you know, on one of our the first uh, locomotive that you made, uh, some people are saying like, oh, this isn't very detailed and stuff. And we only had two hours, obviously, so it can't be as detailed as this. But you can see what uh, what you can do if you put your mind to it and some and some time to it too. Indeed. So uh, shout out, shout out to um, I, I, I <laughs> I'm not sure who this is, but huge shout out. This is an amazing model, an amazing uh, amount of time I'm sure went into this, and the results are stunning. So yeah, yeah I should have his name, uh, his screen name at the top of the post. So we can give them a little, a little love. So, um, Mickey Michael, Mouse, M Michael. Yeah. Uh, from the Czech Republic, from Prague. That's awesome. So nice. Huge, huge can, uh, shout out there. Thematic. <laughs> so uh, yeah, love to see it. That was That's amazing. amazing. All right. Let's, uh, let's get in here. So, today um what are we doing today matt oh we're doing some great yeah yeah i love it uh, it looks like you got some track prepared so that's uh that's a step in the right direction so this track uh, i got from the warehouse um in fact i i got it a week ago so now i've forgotten who to credit for this um, but this is from the warehouse, and uh, if you go look for HO scale track, this this comes up fairly quickly. So, thank you, and I apologize. I, I've forgotten uh, Thomas, I believe something. And in it, it, so this is good track. What we're gonna do to start out with is 
if you were, you know, laying out track just for fun or actually planning, um, you could come in and take this and we could just start copying this around. And if you don't have a lot, this actually may just be the, the fastest way to do it is to make a copy, come in, line this up and we'll rotate this. And because of this base it's sitting on, um, it's pretty easy to do. What we're gonna do is explore um, the gluing behavior of components and how we can modify these and create um, gluing behavior so they stick together and we can actually lay them out easier. So again, if you were doing a simple track, it might be easiest not to uh, bother with creating gluing components. But what we're going to do is show how you could create that because once you have that library, then you can just start playing around. So it'll take us a, a little bit to set it up, but it might be worth it in the long run. So here's how that works. I believe that um, if we look in the components, these were nicely labeled. I think this is a 24 radius and this is an 18. So let's start with the 18, the straight away and this split. And I'm gonna make copies of these over here. With, yeah, it's nice because if these are the exact specifications that come from the factory, then you can essentially lay it out all beforehand before you like buy anything. Make sure you're not buying too much or like too little of any particular track. And it's also exact, right? So if you're, you could, you could sketch it out by hand, but it's not like you don't know exactly if everything is going to be perfect and lined up and everything. So definitely. So in the pre-planning, this, this would be really handy. Um, <clears throat> What, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this up with basically some just, uh, you could call it throwaway geometry or, you know, but we'll put it on its own tag so we can turn it off. But this rectangle, and in fact, I'm gonna put a point on it up here. Um, you'll see why you said th throwaway know. geometry, throw just real away. quick. Uh, yeah, uh, I've also heard it referred to as sacrificial geometry, which is kind of fun. Sure. As long as it's geometry and not, you know, anything living, then uh, that's fun to say. But <laughs> So we're going to create, I'll just call this an alignment panel. Uh, we're going to use this over and over again. So I've just made it a component. Um, we're not going to really be editing it. So that part won't matter. But I'm going to copy it over here. As long as it lays, as long as its relationship to the track is the same, it won't matter what the shape is or where it is, but I'm going to rotate this into place. So we've got this piece right here and let's go to our tags and add a few tags that we're going to need. So we'll, we'll have the track itself and let's have the track base, which we're going to create in a second and let's have um, the alignment panels. So say the panels nice uh, and real quick i'll just have some shout outs from the uh, chat you see some scarborough uh, north yorkshire uk good to see Ooh. you minnesota columbia hello there um algeria wow love to see it the global sketchup live stream awesome. so yeah happy to have the entire community here from all over the place um, now I have a question about this geometry that you put in. You said it doesn't really matter the shape. Is there any particular reason why you pick that like pointy shape at the top? Is there, it easier to select or anything? Or? There is a reason and it'll be easier to see it than to explain it in words now. So mm -hmm. I, I'll, I'll point that out um, in a little bit once we've got this configured. Nice. It's Sit not, tight. That's it's a not teaser. essential. Yeah, it's not essential, but it, it will make things a little easier for us. And, and I'll, I'll show you why. Cool. Um, I'm going to put... So I put the panels there on the panels tag so they can go away. And the track, we're just leaving those as the components they were, but let's put those on the track. So those are set up. Now we're gonna do one more thing, and this is in anticipation of what I think we'll get to later. I think we will. Um, 
But again, it's one of these sort of like, what's that for? It'll be easier to explain it later when we get there then, but just, uh, you know, stay with us. Just know there is a reason for it. Is this reason. isn't arbitrary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and um, what's that? Uh, just a couple more people in the chat here. Norway, France, and I'm going to try to pronounce this one. Vodakavkaz. Wow. Yeah. Hey, there you go. I'm. Oh, yeah, it's great. Happy to see people from all over the place. Well, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Trains are truly a global phenomenon. Yes, they are. And um, right from the bat, because like we're going to be doing you know, some train layout and, and we got to sort of step back and say, I don't know what I'm doing. There are going to be some people out there who are like, you're an idiot for putting up uh, for laying the train out like that. And I'm just going to say, yep, that's true from the start. I don't. <laughs> Correct. It's yeah, I mean, you can still that. use the, it's about the ideas behind the layout, you know, and then you can use those tips for your own, uh, your own techniques. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, that's the fun part too, is, uh, you know, seeing how different people approach a problem. And, uh, you know, we all mess up from time to time, mm -hmm. at least speaking for myself and yourself. I mean, so Aaron maybe doesn't, but I do. <laughs> <laughs> here's a here's a a random tip um i offset this and then i want to erase these interior lines now it's pretty easy it turns out these edges are broken and it's pretty easy to drag and erase out a bunch of them but if you have the native weld command which we introduced a version or two ago uh set to a keyboard shortcut this is can be even easier I don't think I set, I, I'm going to set this up as a shortcut right now so that we can use it moving forward. I think um, I don't have this set on this laptop. So under shortcuts, yeah, I'm going to say weld. Um, if it doesn't show up, sometimes you need something selected so that you can have like a flyout menu option. So let's try that again. Out menu weld edges. I'm going to set mine to Shift W. Oh, cool! I never knew that that having something selected would make the um, keyboard shortcuts different. It does. It's a little bit context. Um, some things uh, you need to have that. At least mm -hmm. in the past, I think that's true. So, the point of doing that, obviously, we could have had this all done by now. But if I triple click on this, select it all, and then say Shift W you know, which is the equivalent of flying out and saying weld edges. Um, this is now one edge. This is now one Ooh. edge. Easy to erase. So. Ooh. <laughs> That's a great tip. And, and if we wanted to, we could select it all again and shift W and weld it, but that's not going to be so important. Okay. I'm going to select this all. I'm going to group it, or we can make it a component um, for my Intended purposes, grouping will be just fine. Um, so we'll see if we can get away with that. That way it's not added to the component browser, but I know different, different, different philosophies about that, but I am going to put it under this track base. So uh, to recap, what I wanna do, and I'm, I'm gonna set up all of these in the same way where I have these panels on then I have the track and then I have this underneath here. And what we're going to do is select all of these. And I've already put them on the tags because it's easier to, to think ahead and get them on tags rather than have to go backwards. Mm -hmm. I select them all. I'm going to make them a component. And let, we'll call this, uh, we'll call these all GT for gluing track. I don't know. That works fine. I think this is a <laughs> 18 radius and what does it do? It curves left. Under glue, we're going to say any. Now I don't think you can go back to a component that you've already created and set this up. I think you have to set it up when you create the component. If I'm uh, wrong about that, please call me out. Are things you can do to a component after it's been created, but I don't think you can 
affect the gluing behavior like this. Um, so I'm going to glue to any, and I'm going to set the component axis up here to this point. So I'm going to click once. Uh, I'll put the red direction over here. I'll put the green direction here. So it, it's aligned with that panel and create it. All right. So why did we go through all that trouble? Let's see what we've got. Here it is. The hope, what I hope to do is to be able to just be able to bring this out and immediately line it up with the previous one. Now, this one's not lining up quite like we would hope. Um, right? Uh, <laughs> that's not what we want, yeah? So, let's check. I, I, in my experience, I rarely get this right out of the gate, but what we can do is if we edit this component and say, okay, it was turned upside down, let's try leaving the red and the green axis in that, that direction, but we want to flip the blue. So I'm going to right click on the axis, say place, click once, put my red this way, I'll stick green up this time. Um, I think this will work because I've tested it before, but I don't usually know that it will work. Oh, yeah, oh, I know. The axis tool is always like elusive to me. One of these, you got to try, it's like flip along. I'm just never, uh -huh. never getting the right one first. But, uh, but yeah, no. Good to see that other people have the same problem. Uh, in the chat, we got Peru. Ooh, Peru. Aaron from Westminster, Colorado. Just a scant few feet away from you over there. Oh. Uh, Scotland, Wisconsin, Uruguay. Um, oh, man. I'll have to see it representing the hometown. So That's sweet. Ooh, nice. And you got the, uh, got the axis sorted. Yeah, so this is what we want to do. When we bring this in, I can just click and it's really easy to set this in place and line it up. That's why we went through all this trouble. And to answer your earlier question, Matt, what I found, because I did a little bit of testing on this, and I, I would mm -hmm. make these, I just made these square. And then I, I set the, I set the, uh, axis right at the midpoint and that worked mm -hmm. just fine it totally works what i found though is as i would zoom out and come in it would snap to both it, it wanted to snap to the the two corners instead of the midpoint and so oh. that's why i in the end said oh well let's just make it a, a pointed panel and then it's really easy even from a distance to snap these in nice that's awesome. So uh, Dave in the chat does say that you can change the gluing after the component is set up. I trust him. I, uh, you can change the gluing. You can add gluing after it's set up. Uh, um, but anyway, I, I trust Dave. Yeah. Um, so the other thing to keep in mind with the, the way that we, this is set up is that because of that axis and because of the way that these panels, right, every surface in SketchUp has a front and a back side, essentially. And in, in this case, mm -hmm. it's sort of this white and this blue side. If I bring this in and set it here, you can see it's, it's uh, set down correctly, but it's bringing it the other way. So this is gonna work in, on one side. And for me, I, it's, it happens to be this back side. So keep that in mind too that um, I won't be laying down track like this. Again, if you change up your axis, you could configure it that way. But for me, mine is configured to lay down like this. Cool. So Good to know. We're going to do that a few more times. And, uh, and let's just use these pieces. So I'm going to copy this. And we'll set up this straight piece. Paste this. Um, now <clears throat> keep in mind, uh, because I pasted it, this one, I want to I wanna keep in mind that face setting if I want to set these all up in the same way. So I'm going to, I'm going to turn this one around, I think, to be sure. 
It's so dark I can't tell. Do I have shadows on? It's weird. I don't know why this is uh this is dark. Funky. That's funny. That's so weird. Did I accidentally paint it? I do not know why. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. If I look at this in my entity info, it is the same. Okay, I'm going to... Okay. Let's... Um... Something weird's bound to happen. It's Friday. That's so true. there's always something... Something... Uh... Interesting going on out there. Yeah, That's speaking of Friday, you guys got plans for the weekend out there? You guys anything uh, anything going on? I know Dave uh, mentioned how cold it is up where he's at, and it's pretty cold over in Michigan where I'm at too. So there's some indoor activities as well. I don't know, board games or something? What I did, I, I, I copied it inside this, uh, this track component, and that's why it, it, it took on the paint from that track component. And that's good because uh, that, that that it warned us because I don't want it inside there anyway. Mm, right. And that's what happened. So I've got that. Uh, might as well copy these over for this next one, which we'll work on in a second. And then down here, I'm just going to select this, copy it, get out of it, and paste in place, and move it down two inches, which is what I had done with the previous one. Nice. Uh, you have your first call. What is this? 23 minutes into the uh, stream here. You have your first call from Steven to Shane. <laughs> Thank you, Steven. Good call. I don't want to miss out on all this progress. You know what? Um, because we started with a, an existing model, at least this time it was auto saving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got some kind of safety net there. Yeah. Versus um, starting from scratch, but to be sure, when I offset, I want to offset. I want the sides, but because we're lining these up end to end, that's why I'm cutting off the front and back. But otherwise, I'm going to group this, and now we can set this one up as well. So I've got all of our pieces selected. I'll make it a component. Glue track straight. I think this is like a nine-inch segment, but I'll just call it that. And then it will, pr oh, well, this is where um, if we go in and edit component, we can change the axis, but this is where I'm not sure where to add the gluing behavior now that we've made it. Um, somebody said in the edit tab in the in uh, in model components panel. And if we go there, edit. Ah, glue to any. Sweet. Let's try this. Good to good to learn in real time. Yeah. Glue to any. And what's interesting is I'm not sure at this point. Also, Aaron in the chat, uh, based on that uh, save call out from Steven, said, if only we can see Matt's shirt today, because I do have one of Aaron's own save shirts that you've probably Ooh. seen in his uh, his scale figure. But uh, okay. where can people get those shirts? I think it's on Aaron's uh, online shirt store somewhere, because he's definitely known for his uh, graphic tees. So... Get your own, own your own, and then every time people see you, they'll just think of the sound. Shame. Because, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's well known. Weekend plans. Lenny uh, looks like he's snowshoeing. If it warms up just a bit, sounds like a good, good activity. Love the uh, snowshoeing. Ove weekend plan: setting up media PC for use with media portal. Might take a few hours and then relaxing with some videos. Uh, 
mm. movies slash TV. Nice. Love a little TV viewing in the warmth of your own home. No kidding. Uh, Andy, no, it's not Aaron's exact same shirt. It's not the physical same one, but it is probably a duplicate. Uh, red shirt, white save, and all block letters. And um, yeah, hey, it's a uh, it's a famous one. So I'm I'm proud to be wearing it, even though I'm just an audio voice in your head today. But uh, someday maybe I'll be on camera. You should be, Matt. When are you gonna <laughs> When are you gonna grace us? that charming mug of yours. Well, if you've seen on the YouTube channel, we do have the uh, uh, Donuts Design and Debate podcast, which uh, we do record live, uh, not on YouTube, but on Crowdcast, which is another platform that we use for, um, you know, voting integration, stuff like that. It's our podcast that we talk about uh, different designs and then vote on whether or not they're good, the audience votes. Um, so you may have seen me in the digital flesh over there but uh but yeah so occasionally i'm i'm in there but that's a good point so if you if you need a face to go with that uh that radio voice <laughs> hey yeah <laughs> more matt more matt more matt more <laughs> matt <laughs> um no, i would never say that um but yeah i uh you know, while we're in the plugs, definitely check out the, uh, on the forum, there is the um, events calendar that says our upcoming stuff. So we've got the the live, obviously streams every Friday. We've got the live uh, podcast coming up um, next month. And then also, um, of course, 3D Basecamp is uh, in September. So that's the king and queen of all SketchUp events. Um be live not live streaming but live in person in vancouver this year so uh you know anybody who's if you've talked to anybody who's been to the 2018 base camp knows that it's uh you know the the ultimate uh, summit of all things sketchup uh we'll all be there and uh you know some of the best sketchup users in the world will be there so um don't miss out tickets are uh for sale now and if you like they have the early bird pricing, so if you're if you order now, they're cheaper than they will be going up in price later. So get them while you're while they're hot. Get them while you can, and that's 3dbasecamp.sketchup.com has all that info. So um, yeah, check it out. Love to see you there. Who uh -huh. Transom said uh, might get sun that week this weekend, so cycling is in order oh man that sounds great right about now if i could if it was warm enough where i'm at to go on a bike ride i would be out there pedaling away that sounds nice enjoy sven says you're the best looking of the group matt and i have to say you know i appreciate you that is uh it's very nice of you to say. <laughs> Don't tell us who's the worst looking, or you know, we'll just we'll 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 just leave it at Matt's the best. <laughs> <laughs> You're Matt's definitely the youngest. He's got all he's got that on all of us. He's got <laughs> oh, more boy. life ahead. <clears throat> I don't know. We'll see about that. We'll see about that. Um <laughs> Dave says, first robotics tonight and tomorrow. It's build season. Uh, uh, nice. Robotics. You love to see it. Getting some uh, transistors going, some resistors, some oh, other things. It, it, that, that makes me think that we need to get Aaron right back in here to uh, build a circuit board, right? I hear that. Yes. Was, that's the best one ever. <laughs> circuit board, circuit board, circuit. <laughs> this place is ridiculous. Um, but yeah, no, that's uh, one of the all-time greats. If you haven't seen that live stream, <laughs> you're missing out. So go back. It's in the uh, in the archives. All of our archives available for free, of course, on YouTube.com. Um, 
a lot of streams, a lot of hours of content. If you're looking for uh, something to watch in the coziness of your own home this weekend, may I direct you to the SketchUp YouTube channel? Uh, but you already know that. You guys are here. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, <clears throat> excuse me, I think we, for the way that, that we're setting this up, we need to create each curve as a separate component. Um, so I've got these three ready and these, I will just copy them, explode them and then recreate. So I've got basically everything I need. I just create it on the other side. Gotcha. Wait, so what did you do to, it wasn't a component wrapper and then. Um, I will show you on this next one. Cool. In the meantime, I think that is one. So uh, I had this one, for example, and I just copied it over and use the scale tool to reverse it. And I could watch the snapping or type negative one. Mm -hmm. And then this, this is still a component, but for me, I've got my keyboard shortcut is, is you. I don't think that's the default one for explode. Why? It exploded. <laughs> You're just waiting for that. <laughs> I'm sorry, Matt. I left you hanging all that time. Just so you <laughs> No, built up the anticipation, <laughs> at least for me. <laughs> oh, good grief. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, you, <laughs> we dragged everybody through that lengthy explanation. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think it's helpful for sure. Because, okay, so uh, real talk. When you explode it, then you don't, then it's not that same component anymore. So you don't have to make unique versus like, obviously, if you're scaling it and just using that one, then you'd have to make it unique, right? Right. So this is, this is our right, right, yeah, left, right. Which one is which, Matt? What's my left? What's my right? Um, that sounds right. Maybe <laughs> I don't know. Um. <laughs> All right, let's test that that we just created, and yep, it works. Once we I, I, once we got that uh, axis on the first one sort of working, then I think the rest of these uh, work no, just fine. Now, nice. another thing that I think is true, but again, I'm happy to be corrected by some of our, our experts out there. If I copy this and paste it, um, it doesn't like the, the gluing behavior, uh, but bringing it in from the component browser is what initiates that, uh, that gluing behavior. So let's go, we've got enough pieces here. Let's actually start building some building our track out. Let's start laying some track. Laying some track. Let's start here with say this split. And can turn it, let's do the other one. Now here's where we're gonna get, get into trouble, Matt, because of the, the don't have any expertise in actually how this, um, you know, how track works and what the considerations are for making sure that, you know, once we try to meet it up uh, mm -hmm. 10 minutes from now, that anything's going to work, but. <laughs> well, we got time. Hey, sure. <laughs> Trial and error. Try it for your, for your own layout. Also, although loop, uh, I've been watching a lot of uh, miniature training videos, of course, nice. loops are, um, you know, cool because you can see the train go around, but also for certain layouts, like, it's a little restrictive to do a loop, especially depending on how much space you have. So some people just do like a straight line. So that way you don't even have to worry about lining it up, lining it up. Um, but yeah, I did see that this kind of gentle uh, uh, kind of curve is important for realism, apparently. Like starting it off straight and then like a little bit of a turn and then more turn. Um, all right. 
So maybe that's a consideration. Not really sure. All the uh, all the model railroaders uh, in the audience can can correct us, of course. This one this way, and let's set this one this way. And yeah, the other thing, of course, is the different. We didn't. We're just using the N eighteen, and there's different. There's even flexible track and all sorts of stuff that I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking for the flexible track, it might be a good use of Profile Builder. Oh, interesting. If you used like. Um, uh, you know, Bezier curve to get your general idea of the of the area, and then use Profile Builder to build out the um, what are those called ties, railroad ties mm -hmm. along the path. That could be really cool. So Tune in next week when Aaron uses the Profile Builder for a <laughs> flexi track. No. Let's commit him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Andy says the split components are actually known as turnouts in the U.S. and points in the U.K. Do you know why? That sounds... Uh, turnouts, but okay, for our U.K. points? points? Yeah, I don't understand points. Um, maybe it's like a, the point where a track splits into two or, or something. Yeah. Hmm. Barry is hyping up your uh, your gluing uh, mechanic way of modeling here. He says, the glue thing is cool. Ah, thanks. It's definitely, uh, I mean, again, you can, you can do this manually, but um, this makes it more fun. Yeah, throw this it's more like real life, just setting it right down and clipping it into place. Yeah, now this is not going to work. <laughs> so let's... Um, I don't know if if we need to bring this out farther to to bring a so this this is this is where I say we're we're gonna get into trouble. We need yeah. a, we need a piece right here that's gonna connect us. Um... This reminds me of uh, there was a bridge that was being built by uh, where I grew up in Michigan called the Zealand Bridge. And uh, it was like this massive engineering project, you know, they started building it. it so it goes over the uh, Saginaw River, I think. Mm -hmm. But it, um, they started building it from either side with the idea to like meet in the middle. And then after like, you know, years of construction and building up either of these sides, they were off by like, you know, a couple feet or something like that. So they had to tear down all of both sides, all of this construction they had done and start all the way from the beginning because of some, some error that in engineering that seems really uh also like that um i mean i don't know how those things work but that you nothing along the way until you get that far along that you could tell wow yeah yeah it seems like hopefully you would have some way of <laughs> double checking that things are on the right track <laughs> um Okay, I, I, I'd be curious in the comments of people who actually know how this works. Like, if you use, are there formulas or are there sort of guidelines for saying if you want these to meet up, you have to use so many pieces of eighteen radius, or 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 that's what eighteen and twenty four and I don't know thirty or something, and that's and they do meet up. But I'd be curious if there's just like, oh no, this would work if you took out one of these pieces and made it straight, like. I don't know. Is are, yeah. are there? Yeah, if there's some mathematical rule to add up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good question. Um, uh, Paul says the points component straight section needs to be longer to match the curved section. I don't know if that's necessarily talking about them lining up or, um, or like the length of the actual track. Yeah, I don't know either. And again, I, I trust that these were built accurately. They were they were built well. I got them, you know, from the warehouse, but again, I don't know enough about them. Um, mm -hmm. 
I wonder, you know, yeah, if we like grabbed one of these 24s and started it over here, would we? So I don't know. I'm going to start building over here and ignore it. That's okay. the idea. I think the idea is there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can make your own more realistic track or whatever if you. Uh... All right. Right. Oh. Put it that way with this um Aaron came in and uh this will this will this will be fun he's saying you know do now this is glued right this is glued so when I try and move this this way so that uh, uh, uh he just pointed out that if we just make this straight long enough we can close that gap which is thank you brilliant um, but it is glued here, which means I can't move it in that direction. So I'm going to have to unglue this one. But this is an interesting, like, keep in mind, I can move this one and everything it's glued to down the way is going to move with it. Or if I go all the way back here towards the uh, first one that we made and start moving it, everything's glued to that one. So this gluing behavior can be really helpful. But sometimes you'll just need to keep in mind, oh, I need to make some adjustments uh, and I may need to unglue one of these. And let's say it's this one. That's cool. I never thought of gluing behavior that way, that they're all connected to each other. I just figured it like, you know, you glue a window to a wall and uh, that kind of thing. But um, that's cool to see them all move, you know, be connected by the, the glued parts. Um, I, uh, I want to, I, I could just move this one, which gets me down here, but, um, mm -hmm. I obviously don't have any snapping, so I better select all these so that I can move by that one. It's, it's kind of, thank you, Aaron, and, uh, everybody out there who probably saw how obvious that was. It's, it's always fun to be in the moment and be like, I don't, you know, I only have these pieces to work with. I can't possibly break that. Uh, no, just it. You just need half a piece, right? No, it's so easy. Uh, come on. <laughs> I'm sure there were people just screaming. Nah, come on. Just add, a, add it right there. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am going to build this one back. Now let's see if we can build this one back. And if that will happen to meet up or if, uh, you know, we do something different, but we'll fix that once we see where we're at over here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If it makes you feel any better. I had no idea how to connect it either. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm lost. Um, some people, let's see. Oh, uh, Andy says spacers. Uh, a spacer Spacers. is what's uh, a short piece of like connecting rail is called short straight piece of track. And there are some over here, like uh, that may not be the, but they're for sure. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that's exactly what those are. In the interest of, you know, time and moving forward, I didn't want to grab and, and connect everything, but that as long as we had the idea. Yeah. Um, Olav in the chat here says, are you going to run a train on those tracks? And I would probably say very slowly if we were to, because <laughs> it does have some uh, aggressive curves, but this is more for illustrative purposes than, uh, than actually. But in the Although the train cars that you and Aaron modeled uh, the past couple of weeks would fit on these tracks because it's the correct scale, of course. So it is. And um if we look over here, yeah, the, the, these will fit, um, but we can't mimic the actual running of the train on the track. Yeah. Maybe with an extension. With an extension, with... Uh, animator, Fredo's animator. Fredo's There's animator, I bet you could do it. Yeah. Uh, the, the, there was an extension in the past, um, that was a physics extension that I wonder. 
Hmm. Yeah. Uh, if that one might, but I, I, I think you're right. Fredo's animator has an option for, um, like running along a path. Now, here we go. Not going to work. So close. So in this case, we need to shorten this straight piece and then have another straight piece here. So, but again, the idea is there. Um, it kind of looks like a slot car racetrack or something. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if, so we deleted that. Yeah. Now we can take the rest of these and line them up like that. And then we just need some nice. straight pieces. So That's awesome. Um, Patrick asks, can you scale one of the straight components to make that gap and keep it glued together? Um, so. mm. I don't, well, let's find out. I, uh, this one, I, we unglued this one so it doesn't count. And the other thing that when we scale this, it depends on how you scale it. Um, when we scale this, it, we're going to lose the spacing. But, you know, for illustrative purposes, that may not matter, right? So. But, yeah, you can see how the railroad ties kind of stretch out a little bit. Yeah. Why doesn't that line up? Did I have that off? That's weird. Oh no, too many 18s. <laughs> That's from when I moved it. Uh, <laughs> I've heard, I saw that there's, there's, um, there's software out there that's like some simplistic that just, you know, it's like 2D, put your stuff down. And then there's there's software out there that's just for train or for planning train tracks and, and it'll mimic oh, really? your stuff and it'll, you know, list your parts and, and you can mimic even because trains get so complicated in like the in the switching and the way you can control them and the way that if you have multiple trains and tracks, they can know where each other are and you can get a train that'll wait for another to pass and oh that's pretty sweet it, it gets really um amazing wave Shoo. andy requests if you could uh lay the track so it spells sketchup out <laughs> <laughs> andy nobody you us nobody wants to wait around while we do that <laughs> nobody wants to see that <laughs> All right. Oh, maybe this is the software you're talking about. Lenny says, if you like model railroading, but lack the space and or cash for the hobby, try trains software uh, with a Z capital. It's all caps trains with a Z has signals and trains, et cetera, that you can kind of put together. So it sounds similar to what you're talking about. Okay. Very cool. All right. So with this, and again, I, uh, we're cheating a little bit by scaling these. Um, as opposed to uh, kind of creating a unique component that would have the right spacing at it. But we're going to keep moving forward and we will create our last piece over here. Mm -hmm. Because doing that, you would just basically make a copy of the straight one and then delete the geometry you don't need, basically, right? Yeah. Yeah, that'd be one way to do it. Do it a ways. Um, but what I want to try, I haven't tried this, but in theory, this is, um, this should work. So once we've done this much, uh, we've got our track laid out. And if we go to um, our tags, right now we can hide our panels. We could have hide the, hid the, uh, the base from the start. We've got the, that base <laughs> from those pieces we broke out. Um, actually there's a couple pieces over here. Maybe I didn't, uh, didn't put these. That's okay. I wanted that base to give us something, uh, this little gap here to give us something to work with, uh, for the terrain. So that's what this is going to hopefully help us do. Um, we'll come back to this in a mo. Cool. I like it. Um, Keggy says, possible reason for the term points 
is from the lever used to operate it. If the lever is forward, it's said to be in the normal position and it sets the point for the most used route. Oh. Well, thanks, Kiki. That could be interesting. Um, okay. I'm not going to go into, because um, I'm not a terrain um, guru, I'm going to just try and create some simple terrain. And also, we kept all this flat, and I did that because I didn't want to create the kind of headache for myself that would result in <laughs> trying to create. There, yeah, again, trains, there's all sorts of like ideas around what the, the slope what kind of slope you can have based on, mm -hmm. I don't know, the engine, the cars you're pulling. The nice thing about this is, um, in theory, even if I tilt this up, uh, let me turn my panels back on. Yeah, and then, and then I, I, I bring these in. You know, they will now keep, because they're aligned with that original one, everything I, I put in here, Oh, this is interesting. This is a little off. User error. That's on me. But you can see what what the the point is that like maintains the same slope. Yeah. Kind of right. Yeah. So again, with the the planning that you could do. In theory, let's create. So I'm going to use SketchUp's sandbox tools. And let me grab a top view, toggle my perspective, and let's create um, something. Uh, my grid spacing, the default grid spacing for the sandbox, I think is at 10 feet because it's meant for much larger. And this, I think I set my grid spacing to one inch. So if I pull this across, we're going to create a pretty um might be a little much to work with but let's give it a try now i'm gonna try uh many of you will know about uh there are some extensions that make this um i i think kind of more fluid artisan is a great one for sculpting terrain like this. I don't think I have Artisan uh, on this compi, but um, so we'll just use the, the regular smooth, tool, smooth tools and just do a little bit of uh, landscaping here. So if I click here, my radius is, uh, looks like at 15 inches, which looks all right. This is um, for those for those interested in artisan. I dropped the link in the chat. Ah, thanks, Matt. When this is, um, it's a little worried about this. When you when uh, when you create a a terrain grid with the native um, sandbox tools and then try to sculpt it, um, it starts to to grind a bit. If not a bit, then a lot. Uh, would making the grid at a smaller like resolution work for that or yeah that would help um maybe maybe need to do that it wouldn't matter because you're doing this at scale right would it matter if you're doing it at scale versus like you know that 10 foot scale like you were talking about or? yeah I, I don't think too much Okay, this mm -hmm. is, uh, for some reason, it had that pre-selected and it didn't want to let it go, but um, I'm going to bring this up to 30 inches, and I'm just going to try to make some sort of really general. Gently sloping hills. Exactly. I mean, it would be fun to take the time and, uh, you know, great train sets. You go in and out of mountains. You have tunnels. You have bridges. You have some really fun pieces um mm -hmm. i'm not gonna do that i'm too scared 
I don't mind saying so. I'm way too scared to try and do a, a, a detailed terrain and pull it off in the, you know, live and in the time we have. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, yeah, maybe we'll do an eight hour stream uh, next week exactly. and then really get into it. I, I'll, I leave it to Aaron. <laughs> That's a challenge. Getting called out. <laughs> All right, so that is uh, enough of a terrain, and you know, maybe in the middle we could put a pond here or something. Artisan is more sculpty if anybody's ever tried it. Like you sort of paint with a brush and you sort of sculpt as you go, whereas smooth is just a piece at a time, and it creates these kind of very um, these bumps that tend to that tend to get kind of obvious. It's called by other tools, but I can't say it live. It's called by other names. <laughs> um, oh, one thing we should call out, even though we're kind of joking about what uh, what the stream is going to be next week, uh, it's the last of the uh, of the train uh, model series, and Aaron's going to be doing uh, sort of entourage buildings and things, making this. Uh, look like a real live, you know, uh, train layout, um, or somewhat like one. So, um, you know, adding buildings and, uh, I don't know, all the kind of fun stuff that goes on a model train set. So yeah. if you're interested in that, don't miss next week. That is fun. The fun stuff. All right. Did we close this off? All right. So here's, I hope this works again. It, in theory, it, it, it seemed like it might work to me. We're going to find out right now. <laughs> well, it's going to be interesting. Yeah, it's going to be so interesting. Or disastrous. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're ready for some explosions in here. But probably people know where, where this was going from the start. So I'm going to take my copied version and explode it. Explode all these so that I can get rid of the track. And if I turn panels back on, get rid of the track and the panels. I created that uh, base underneath with the intention of doing this, with the intention of creating a, a, something that I could drape um, into the terrain. So if I now ungroup these and the way we set them up they should be touching they should this this should give us that uh that the path that we want pretty easily so i'm going to take them explode them triple click let's just group that and um i'll do a quick weld and see uh how well Isolate this. How oh, well? Lost something here. Let's use Tom Tom's cleanup, um, which sometimes you can use Solid Inspector and tell it to fix. But um, in this case, it's not work. Let's see. Do I, I? I may not have cleanup. Just kidding. I don't have it. Let's just try and clean this up. Nice. Manual cleanup. Steady. <laughs> Steady hand over there. Um, Paul was asking if we we're going to do a table to sit on uh, next week, a table for the, the train layout to sit on uh, next week. And I'm not exactly sure. I mean, I'm sure Aaron could do that, but. Uh, Maybe I'll have to chime in to see if that's in the plan. Of course, everything is uh, off the cuff here, so just improvising. Just making cool uh, stuff. We're just making cool stuff. Maybe we'll do a mm -hmm. table uh, today. Maybe everything will work so fantastically that we'll start twiddling our thumbs and be like, man, what do we do? <laughs> I mean, that happens all the time, right? Man, you're crazy. <laughs> now see if that's how it works out you set them up and you knock them down matt 
All right. Come on. Almost there. And uh, good. Okay. Nice. Everybody, cross your fingers. We've got our shape. We're going to see if we can set this into the terrain. Don't mess up. Thanks. Because we ungrouped this, this is untagged. I'm just going to hide all these. Um, these are all untagged too. But these. Uh, oh well. <laughs> look at look at my mess. Uh, I, <laughs> I have actual geometry here that's on uh, on different tags. Let's fix that. That's a that's a pretty clear no no. Geometry, <laughs> geometry is supposed to stay untagged, and then just groups go tagged. All right, that should work. I'm just going to bring it up and then I believe we're going to use um, stamp. So if we stamp and my offset, when I made that original one, my, I made that offset by um, uh, three quarters of an inch. So I'll try that. I'll, or I can make it one inch. It, it probably is not going to matter. Offset it in. Click on our terrain. It's gonna think. It's not, I should have saved. Who? Oh, oh no! Where were you, I, Steven, We need you. I should have saved. <laughs> if you're gonna if you're gonna go messing with a, a a mesh like this, I should have saved. You might be frozen. Ooh. Oh. Sort of. Oh. Okay. That's not exactly <clears throat> what we wanted. Okay. You know, <laughs> I don't use drape often enough. People who do might have anticipated this. It might be that drape only works on a full exterior cave or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Well, could you do this and then do the insides separately? Or I don't exactly know. I would assume so. Um, if we if we broke that out, maybe I'm not really. Let's do this for the moment. Let's move this whole set over by, let's say, 10 feet. So we're just out of the way of this stuff because my tags are messed up. Yeah, if we created several outlines. Oh, uh, well. <laughs> bail out, bail out. Do you have more? Yeah, do you have you have the the voice um a voice for just like run away thanks everybody <laughs> have right, a good weekend <laughs> yay oh okay uh just for our own sanity check for anybody who knows does should this in theory work the way that we've set it up or will drape only do an exterior uh, okay, so Aaron says to break it, take one straight away out of the outline. Good point. We can do this in in pieces. Gosh, I freaking had a abort sound effect too, and I for some reason didn't put it in the soundboard. What am I doing? Oh, Matt. Man, I've got other ones though. Let's see. Let all the air out of your horse. <laughs> um let's see struggle so that's a good thought aaron if anybody else has ideas out there on how um this might work better from the start or maybe this is just the <sighs> Yeah, we got a couple um, couple ideas here. Keggy says, if you could extrude the shape and then use solid tools to cut the terrain. That's true. Um, if they are solids, I don't know how much work you'd have to do to make them into that. But then also, doesn't 
drape or whatever. Doesn't it have like a, like you said, that offset to kind of make it a little uh, more gradual than just like straight hmm. cut. It does. So it, we wouldn't get that if we just did a, a straight cut. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to say it says, could be better to divide the track in segments. So kind of what you're doing. So yeah, see how, uh, see how she works. Now, because of the way that we're doing this, we're going to have to resolve the, the ends. Um, each end will have a sort of thing going like that. But, you know, we'll, maybe we'll, we'll get there still. Yeah. It's good to see, you know, troubleshooting. Let me give you a little bit of a different take on this. Do it from different angles. <laughs> Okay, so that's what we want. And let's say something about like that. Okay, that's one. Let's just nice. see what happens when we throw this one in here again because of this. Not sure that we're gonna get quite what we want, but let's let's find out how messy it's gonna get. Yeah, worth a try. I you know it's gonna do a little cleanup. <laughs> people love hand stitching so i hear do they though do y'all <laughs> do you really just like to see people sharing their pain of um trying to get exactly what you want <laughs> but, uh, um let's see the forum link is in the description and Andy said he uploaded a picture of his uh, current layout that he has. I head over there and check that out. Cause... Oh, that'd be... oh, cool. So this could work for us. What, what, what's kind of interesting about this is that we get no snapping on this. Um, we in theory can put it down and then use the move tool to move this and, and uh, it should still work and then we could get snapping. And hopefully that would set us up. <clears throat> so, okay, that's, that's, uh, we're, we're getting there. Nice. That worked. All right. Good thought, Aaron. Bring. Get us, get us across the finish line. Let's save again. And do the last piece. Um, yeah, you didn't even need any stitching. Just uh, a simple move command. Maybe that's all you need sometimes. You don't need to stitch. Right. Aaron is in the in the chat saying, stitching, stitching, stitching. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> well, given that Aaron is just around the corner, you know, we could have a guest appearance, be like our master stitcher. Yeah, <laughs> he comes in. He's the closer. He's the uh, the ringer. I, I'm going to say right now, Aaron, um, uh, that your save shirt is probably the most iconic, but you, you need master stitcher <laughs> as, as a secondary one. So I'm just giving that to you. Possible. We can make any shirt we need. <laughs> um, looks like LTF007 had the same idea as you of uh, getting like a general idea of where the stamp goes and then moving it into position along the Z axis. All right, see, it worked in our last one. Let's let's, uh, let's make it work in this one. It should work. Okay. I think. Nice. This little canyon over there, I like that. Fun part of the train ride. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody here, there's one thing we can say. and that's... You guys really know how to have a good time. There's no question about it. <laughs> and you know that Friday afternoons are always a good time. 
Okay, let's let's um, get risky here. I'm gonna try. You know, these these should be lined up. I'm gonna try and erase some geometry. Let's see if uh, if they actually are. Looks like they are. So let's get more ambitious. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I have some time. <laughs> well, I'm not gonna push my luck. We are going to just use smoothing. Uh, and uh, and get us, sometimes that's all you need. Get us just visually there. Okay, so we move this back ten feet, I believe it was. Now we have to deal with because uh, now I want to turn the track back on, but now we have the track base of these pieces that need to go away. All right. But you know what? They're going to be hidden underneath. Can't see them. No worries. Yeah. I mean, that's uh, that's always one of the cardinal rules, you know. It probably applies to actual train sets, too, is if it's underneath the terrain, underneath, uh, you know, the little bushes and trees and stuff, if you can't see it, then, you know. Exactly. Because it's probably just, like, styrofoam cut up underneath there or something like that, but... And with models too, you know, if you're just doing a rendering from a certain angle, you don't have to do the backside of the house if you're oh, yeah. just looking for one particular uh, view. So these are all great points. Yeah, it's relatable. Boom, we did it. Bada boom. Track, landscape. It's in there. All right. It Look at is that. there. Full speed on there. Let's throw some trains on there. Oh, we're going to get in trouble. Let's do it. I love it. Um, Hornock said, pretty good job. Not too bad so far, he says. Uh, uh, Dave's also uh, has a comment referring to your face orientation. I think the, the uh, you know, the different faces on the terrain are going... Fair enough. Different ways. They surely are. So we can address that in just a moment. Um, let me copy this stuff out and throw it in a new model. Let's see, though. We can get this set down into this track. Let's get it close, and then we'll... Lenny says it's time for the golden spike. Oh, yeah. Sweet. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Act. Beautiful. It's there. We're chugging away, baby. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, Hornock Sweet. says you don't need to clean up because Aaron will uh, take care of all the cleanup next week. <laughs> exactly. An excellent point. You're spot on <laughs> look uh look uh, look to aaron next week for <laughs> i i know last week he um he, he he got asked to and and made some connectors for these trains but these are some that i had made previously these are these are, this is an aaron's caboose which is excellent but it's uh so they don't have connectors we're just gonna zoom out so you can't tell <laughs> <laughs> That's all it takes. Well, wow, that's easy. All Maybe right. these are magnetic, magnetically connected. So let's. Uh, I'm going to reverse the face. Okay, good, good. Um, which is also a right-click option. Now, when you have a, a surface like this, um, a lot of times you can click on this and say orient faces. I'm going to guess it's not going to work. Yeah. Um, you can try it a couple times sometimes. But uh, unless we're going to render this, this is a case where I would probably just throw some, maybe we will, we'll just throw some texture on here. Yeah, I'll cover it up pretty quick. Right? Yeah, because you're going to put grass and stuff over it anyways. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, you try something like this, but... This this kind of messy surface um, usually doesn't 
right now we've made it worse <laughs> and i suspect dave knew that was coming and just wanted to <laughs> just wanted to poke you yep that's my guess anyway anyway that's fine yeah well in this case reversion faces is frivolous and unnecessary <laughs> boy so let's see Dave does have a suggestion to show the hidden slash softened edges and then orient faces. I did. And throws in a smiley because I think this is related to what you're talking about is. So I've got it. I can take one of these correct ones and orient faces. And uh Whoa! It's still going to be messy. That's my experience. I, um, I am not going to mess with it. Aaron, no problem. Yeah, material will. Uh... You, it, Aaron, right, guy? Aaron. <laughs> yeah. Actually, we don't even need to wait till next week because he's there. Once you're done, have him uh, have him come in and. Uh, individually change all those faces hey yeah. i'd like to get home at some point thank you very much <laughs> that'd be a long stream um oh we need let's go back to our smoothing and and get this i want to see if we can color just the base differently but we it may not. It may be too late. Uh, I'm not going to mess with it. All right. We'll leave it. Nice. That okay. works. Paul, Paul has a suggestion. If you gave the whole track a uh, base, a bottom, so the entire thing was a solid, would it orient that way? Oh. Like if it was like a, you know, a well, box you know kind of thing. I don't think it will, but we're going to do it because that's a good suggestion. Let's uh, let's see if we can let's give it some depth. Give it at least a, a a table, a simple table base. Yeah, something to sit on. Mm -hmm. Can just be floating islands like uh, Avatar or something. Oh yeah, what is this? Kind of who builds such a thing? <laughs> what? What's the what's the material in that in, in Avatar like super ultimatium or something? It's some... <laughs> oh unobtainium. Unobtainium. <laughs> Get out of here with that unobtainium. <laughs> all all all, uh, all elements on the period table should should be named by James Cameron. <laughs> hey, he's got the deep sea exploration, and then next mm -hmm. thing. You know, that's the next uh, hurdle to cover is uh, the periodic table. <laughs> you can actually right. put this thing on a periodic table now. Yeah. Nice and flat. Andy uh, has a little tidbit about model trains. Says uh, you now have static grass is what it's called. Tiny fibers or strands of grass. That's stuff that you apply uh and then put a static electric current through it to make it stand upright oh, i've seen something like that that is cool that is like that is a cool process to to watch that's very cool. does it also work if you like rub a balloon on your head and then hold it over it i don't know, it's you know? Kind of balloon. i got a rubber chicken <laughs> it's balloon like <laughs> i <laughs> <a> rubber chicken. <laughs> in. Anything to work the rubber chicken in. Oh no, where'd the uh, rubber chicken go? <laughs> People love it. Um, well, we got there. We can uh, we can throw some um, simple face me trees on here, or other trees, or we could leave it to Aaron, but. Um, or we could call it call it a day. We actually did get there. Yes, 
That's awesome. Yes. I like it. Uh, like it. Like it a lot. <laughs> I don't know. The fun part now is is doing some of the little buildings and stuff, right? Because that's sort of like the SketchUp wheelhouse. That's what it's so good at in making a little water tower. Or I didn't create a, a place for a, a viable bridge, but little bridge. That would be the fun stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Save the best for last. Yeah. Aaron will get to get creative next week for sure. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. So what you feeling, Matt, should we throw any entourage on here? Or shall we just uh, call it? What do you think out there? What do you guys want? You want a couple more, uh, a couple more additions to this model? Or are you ready to get the weekend started? Uh -huh. I could go either way. Um, Sven asks why we have that rubber chicken. Why not? <laughs> why not? <laughs> I don't understand the question. <laughs> <laughs> and Dave says, of course, it's for making rubber chicken soup. Um, it, when SketchUp crashes, that's when it's time to, to call it, right? <laughs> we blew yeah, it. it's a pretty good, pretty good, uh, Pretty good ending point, I think. Oh, snap. <laughs> <laughs> we we tried to access the warehouse and we broke it. Um, nice. Well, yeah, I like it. Um, looking forward to next week, of course. And um, yeah, I don't know. In the meantime, I'll, I'll throw in one more plug for 3D Warehouse. So uh, like I said, 3D Warehouse tickets are on sale now. And uh, it's the early bird pricing. So... Prices are only going to go up. Um, we do have, um, you know, all the info on COVID cancellation policy and everything on the website. Uh, so if that's something that you're interested in reading through, that's on there. Um, but there's a lot of great information on there about the entire event. And um, yeah, we're only going to be having more sneak peeks into who's going to be presenting, what all the all the fun stuff is uh, going forward. So watch this space uh all the sketchup um social media will have info on that so uh yeah looking forward to getting to see y'all in real life uh although it is fun to hang out in the chat but uh you know sometimes it doesn't just nothing beats true human interaction it's true good call um and i think um I know some of you will have seen, but uh, it, right now, did you mention, Matt, that right now there's a, there's at least an open call? So if you have a really unique uh, or interesting way of using SketchUp that you want to share with others, um, you can submit to be a presenter. Again, it's not guaranteed. Uh, but I think right now we do have um, the call open for anybody who wants to present. So, yes, I am putting that link in the chat right now. So, um, yeah, because that's uh, if you want to show off your amazing SketchUp models, your amazing skills, and uh, share it with the community, we'd love to see it. And yeah, throw in the throw the presentation into that link, and we'll consider you. So, um, yeah, like I said, it's kind of the the summit of all the best SketchUpers in the entire world. So, um, if you want to be among the best and present among the best. Throw some, uh, throw some presentations in there. Yeah. Um, My suggestion, just to, um, because we have seen some, is uh, don't just throw in there that like, oh, hey, yeah, I use SketchUp and I'm willing to share what I do in SketchUp. Like, add some detail and add a process. What is it that's kind of, you, you know, what are you actually trying to show about it? So, we welcome present presentations, but get 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 some detail and and make something that's kind of, you know as interesting or unique as you think you can make it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Cause I'm sure it's great. And, uh, we want to make sure that, you know, you're communicating that to us and, uh, that we can spread it to the entire community. So mm -hmm. yeah, fill us in on the cool stuff you guys are doing. Yeah. Um, well, given that we just crashed last time, we tried to go find some, uh, entourage. I, we may be done. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I'm in a I'm in a good spot. 
it's an early start to the weekend today. So uh, that's, you know, that's a good thing. Yeah. Nice work by you. Way to go! <laughs> well, thanks, everybody. Um, see what happens. Uh, I'll see if uh, this comes in, but we can call it. We're, we're, we're in a good spot. Yeah, yeah, I think so, too. Got to mix it up, have a short one now and then. So, yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, like I said, come back next week for the full the full little train vignette with, uh, ooh, wow, I got the, the big old trees there. I did find some trees. But, uh, what in the world? <laughs> got some crazy geometry off in... Yeah somewhere Timbuktu yeah and also Andy uh said he has some photos on the forum don't miss don't miss out on those check them out in the forum thread that's in the description um is this of your your uh personal train Andy that'd be sweet yeah yeah it's his home it's like the SketchUp model of his home uh layout so oh very cool very cool yeah yeah some cool looking stuff in there the track looks eerily reminiscent of yours but uh, maybe a little bit more, <laughs> I don't know, model railroady? Who knows? Okay. Um, <laughs> you going to try to get these trees in there before before the wire? I know. You're talking your way out, and then I'm uh, just like, come on, <laughs> get in there. It's going to be like large trees. <laughs> well, you to bring in the, uh, you know, the cane pull you off stage. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, they, you know, there was a variety that came in together, so I can just be like, uh, yeah, here. I, I totally created some entourage. See? <laughs> Bingo. It's filled out now. It's real. Okay. It's getting real. Boom. Oh, sorry. Take us out, Matt. All righty. Yeah, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll catch you next week. Have a great weekend, everybody, and... Uh... Take care. Take Thanks. it easy. Bye now.